Now, The Crown is hitting the headlines this morning with upcoming storylines set to upset the royals, we're told, particularly plans to dramatise Diana's final moments. Royal editor Russell Myers joins me now. I mean, what's going on? <laughs> they have to do it, don't they? Netflix, of, it's, of course. it's been doing warts and all and, you know, with some artistic licence thrown mm. in. Well, of course, I mean, you know, the only people who would be pleased about this are the producers uh, at Netflix, I imagine, because the amount of uh, publicity they've had has been extraordinary over the last few days. We've had, uh, you know, rows about uh, the depiction of Prince Charles, uh, when he was Prince Charles, of course, uh, Prince Philip, of course, and the allegations of an affair. And now we have, um, you know, in a, a potential storyline coming out about uh, Diana's final moments. Now, Netflix have come out and said, of course, they won't be showing that uh, the, the, the tragic crash, the actual incident itself. But, of course, we'll be looking at the hours before and after. Mm. So it's a, a lot more um, sort of unsetting scenes for the royal family, I think. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned the depiction of uh, Prince Charles as being... Uh, well, King Charles. Well, yeah, well, Prince Charles when, he was back when there, he was yes, the yeah, prince. Yeah. Um, and John Major, the Prime Minister at the time, has really come out strong, yeah. criticising. Well, these are very uh, strong. The crown. Yeah, you're right. These are very, very strong words. And this comes back to a, a period in 1991 when the Queen was 65 and uh, and Charles at the time was was um, sort of leaning on a public poll that had been put out at the time. I think it was about 47 percent of people had uh, had backed him to to take over the top job from his mother. So there's this. Scene in in series five of uh, of Charles and John Major, uh, essentially plotting to, to potentially him get getting the role. Um, now John Major has come out and he said that this is damaging and malicious fiction. And why wouldn't he? Because if this is true, which you know we are, uh, he's saying of course it wasn't. It's a, it's a, almost a treasonous act, isn't it? They was plotting to overthrow the monarch at the time. So very very strong words in, in from him. And um, and we must believe, we must remember that this is a. Uh, you know, it is a fictional series. And I know that a lot of people have been saying that you should come with some sort of health warning, and uh, I think we do need to remember that. And do you feel that? I mean, do you feel that we are taking it as though we're learning something about our history in a much more detailed way that we never knew about the family? But actually, as a royal editor, mm. do you watch it and wince at bits and go, oh, there's the... You know, that's where the little stuff... This well, is fictional. Again, so, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't have been uh, privy to those conversations at the time, and, uh, and uh, the, these fictional dramatisations are being taken at face value. I mean, The Crown has a, a, uh, um, a viewership of millions of, uh, around the world, certainly in Americans are completely lapping it up, and this is how people are getting their sort of royal yes, history, I suppose. They so, uh, are. We do so, no wonder... John Major is angry. Thought, oh, because he's absolutely furious. Um, Why and he what's be? really fascinating, of course, is the terrible predicament that Harry and Meghan appear to be in now. They are rolling back, aren't they, on the publishing date of their documentary for yes, Netflix. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. They wanted it out in December, the, the, the yeah. streaming giant. Well, Harry they did. I mean, they're, so they're, they're at loggerheads, I, I've, I've been told, of, with uh, with the studio, because not only are Harry and Meghan sort of uh, trying to repair their relationships with the family, we saw them over here for the Queen's funeral. Uh, they were here, of course, for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, but didn't really have too much um, uh, of a relationship with, with the family. And, of course, we've got Harry's book coming out as well. But this big Netflix series that they're doing, sort of a warts and all behind the, the scenes series, I think Meghan called it a uh, you know, depiction of their love story that... Uh, that they've been doing. Well, and one with wonders Netflix. what they've been saying about the king. Well, because if they're worried about it coming out. What does that mean? Well, of course, they, they have several masters now, don't they? Because they have the, not only the studio that are paying them an incredible amount of money. There's rumours of £100 million um, contracts with Netflix, but also the family as well. And I think that uh, not only have we, um, we're, we're seeing yeah. these issues with the book come out, then they're, they're in a... Well, let's see who'll win that battle territory. in the book, mm. in the, in, in the docuseries. Um, uh, let's talk about um, some clips that we're going to see yes. uh, later on tonight on ITV of Ghislaine Maxwell's first interview from prison in which she talks about her relationship with Prince Andrew. Well, this is extraordinary. I mean, this is the first interview. It's uh, by an American journalist called Daphne Barak. She has got to uh, to speak to Ghislaine Maxwell while she is in prison. I mean, we've remembered she's serving a 20-year jail term for sex trafficking, uh, but she comes out and says essentially how sorry she is for, for, for Prince Andrew, that uh, he'd sort of had his reputation dragged through the mud just because of her reputation, or, or his relationship with her. She says she calls him a dear friend. She says, I care about 
about him. She then talks about that infamous photo, if you call the one with his arm round uh, Virginia Dufresne's waist with, uh, with Ghislaine Maxwell in the background. And what did she say? Because she has contradicted herself, because she did actually tell a lawyer that that looked like a real photograph when she was asked about it. But now, in this interview, she's retracting that point of view. Well, not only that, I mean, it's, it's, it's really pointed what she says. She says that this is not a real photograph. She says that there was never an original one produced. Of course, that was a big controversy at the time. She was also said that uh, she doesn't believe it's true, the original has never been uh, produced, and that there are over 50 problems with this picture. Now, she doesn't go into detail what the 50 problems are, but that is an extraordinary statement to make. Yeah. Certainly that Prince Andrew's uh, legal team previously, when he was fighting this civil case against Virginia Giuffre, which he has settled and said that he Denies. had no denied or wrongdoing. Um, but, uh, but it is a very interesting point that she comes out with. Well, yeah, I'm not sure the royal family would be grateful for her intervention. <laughs> I can't imagine they um, will be, no. There are some other very famous names that Ghislaine goes into. We've got a, sort of a minute. We do, yes. Yeah, very quickly, she goes into details about her relationships with with Donald Trump, I and mean, he was the first person to come out and say that he wished her well when she'd been arrested. I mean, that didn't work out too well. And also Bill Clinton as well, because of his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. So fascinating. There's going to be some clips tonight on ITV about 6.30 and be show in the yes. US at a later date. Sweaty palms for some people <laughs> very, very around so. the world. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Thank you Thank so you. much, Russell.